So, you're tired of religious and fruitless worship. You've been taught law with grace. You're more confused now than you were when you joined church. There is hope, come visit us at Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church and hear the teaching of the grace of God, which sets you free. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. The times of worship are 8.30 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. You may also join us on Facebook at the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship page or the Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube page. All are welcome and we look forward to teaching you the truth about God, teaching you to be committed, accountable, and responsible to the things of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. We are walking through Christian Fellowship Church. I want to welcome those who are listening around the world. Our three churches in Kenya. I want to thank you and bless you that you're there. I want to continue to pray for you in the name of Jesus, because Jesus is the only name that we shall be saved from. It's the only name that men can be saved through is the name of Jesus Christ. So we want to thank you today for joining us for our Walk True Christian Fellowship broadcast. We are a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, and we pray that you hear something today that will make you ask, if you're not saved, what must I do to be saved? And if you are a believer, you'll be encouraged, be blessed, and you'll be at peace once you hear the Word of God. The Word of God is the center of our broadcast. So we want to thank you today for, again, tuning in, turning it on, and participating with us. So just get your Bible, sit back, and enjoy. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the Word of God. We have a great guest speaker, Pastor Joseph Purdy, and we thank God for him coming. And we just pray that he will give us I know he will give us a rhema word for today. Amen. So now we're going to have scripture and prayer from Sister Stacy. Amen. 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 Our scripture today is coming from Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 starting at verse 3. And it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. I've read to you Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 8. May God have blessed to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Um, let us pray. Dear God, we come before you today just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day, Lord, another glorious morning, Lord, that we can wake up and give your name praise, honor, and all the glory, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, your goodness, and your grace, God. Thank you for waking us up with our minds stayed on thee, God. Thank you for waking us up with healthy bodies and healthy minds, God. But we thank you for your faithfulness, God. You are so faithful, God. You are faithful to give us strength every morning, Lord. You are faithful to keep us from evil, God. And we just thank you, God. And Lord, we thank you for the dispensation of grace that we are now living under, God. Lord, we thank you that we have been adopted as your sons and daughters, Lord, and we can share in the divine inheritance, God. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for all knowledge, Lord, all spiritual wisdom and understanding, God. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us, God. We thank you for increasing our understanding of your word, Lord. And we pray for the word that's going to go forth today, God. We thank you and we praise you. And we pray that the word will strengthen our hearts, Lord. It will lift us up, continue to bless us and keep us, God. Thank you, Lord. Continue to... Heal us, God, those that are sick, God. We know that you are able. Yeah. These and all things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> we thank God today for all that he's doing. And now, uh, Sister Freedy, you ready? I am ready. All right. The microphone works over here. 
Okay. So we're going to have a song from Sister Frida, and then we're going to get ourselves ready to hear the word of God. Amen? Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 And now we're going to hear from Pastor Joseph Purdy. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. You know, we live in uncertain times. We live in uncertain world. So many things are happening. The, the elections, the pandemic. So many things are going on. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I say, Lord, why so much? But then I find comfort in the word of God. And hopefully today, by the time service is over, you will have gained some strength, some hope, just to make it just a little bit further. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start in the book of Psalms at the 23rd chapter of Psalms. And we're going to read those first four verses, I think. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now let's go to Isaiah, and look at chapter 43. And looking at 43, the first verse, it reads thus. Okay. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by my name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shalt the, the flame kindle upon thee. Back to the second verse. It says, when thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. Now we're going to jump to Matthew chapter 28. And looking at the 18th verse, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. People of God, I want to say to you that I don't care what you're going through. If you're in Christ Jesus and he's in you, you ain't in it alone. Amen. 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 I don't care what it looks like. You ain't in it alone. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that all things do work together for good to them that love God who are called according to his purpose. We don't always feel it. We don't always see it. We certainly don't always understand it. But because God said it, he said in, 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 in Psalms that when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I'll be with you. Amen. That's what the psalmist said. Then Isaiah picked it up and said, the fire won't burn. You see, the people of God have been tempered to withstand the onslaughts of the enemy. We've been given armor. We've been given the word of God to stand on and to believe. But let me say this here in the book of uh, Hebrews, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, if it's impossible to please God without faith, then with faith, guess what? Amen? Let's look at the woman with the issue of blood. She had this issue for some 12, 13 years or so. And the doctors weren't able to do anything to help her. But she said in herself, now I don't know if she had been to a, a Bible class or she had been to a prayer meeting somewhere, but she said within herself, I know that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know if I can just touch. And right then she said, I know I'll be made whole. The Apostle Paul picked it up again and said, I know in whom I have believed. And I'm fully persuaded that he's able to keep all that I have committed unto him, even unto the day, even unto the end. I know there was a centurion soldier who once had a servant that was sick, and he went to Jesus. And he asked Jesus to come and heal his servant. And Jesus got ready to go. And then the centurion soldier said, wait a minute, Lord, look, I'm a man of authority. I say to this man, go, and then this man stop, and this man do this, and they obey. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come even come under my roof. And he said, look, I know, there it is again, I know, I know that if you speak, my servant will be all right. He said, just like I command men, I know that you command all the elements of the world. And I know that if you, Jesus, if you speak a word, I know my servant will be with you. And said that in the story, I think it says that the Centurion soldier went back and met some of his other servants and they told him that the servant that he was concerned about was doing well. And he asked him, he said, by what hour was it? And when they told him, they said, he knew that it was because Jesus had spoken. Let me tell you something, I don't care what you're going through in this life, 
I don't care what you're suffering in this life. When I say I don't care, I'm saying this to the point where God is able. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask. How much can you believe God for? How much can you believe God for? If you can't do nothing about the situation, why not believe him anyway? Amen. Amen. If it's out of your hand, why not just believe God? Amen. Amen. We need to get in God's word and, and find our home and our, our refuge in his word. There's another scripture that says that the word that God is like a strong tower. And we can run in and we're saved. If they talk about Jesus as being the rock. He's the rock which we can stand on. He's the rock that we can hide behind. According to your faith, be it unto you. When Paul said, and, 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 and when, we, when we come to service and we listen to the teaching and the preaching and, and all the things that go on in the, in the house of God, we, we look at scriptures as words on the page sometimes. But did you ever think about that when Paul was saying, I know in whom I have believed. He wasn't reading that. He wasn't reading that. Many things that we see in the Old Testament, the, the, the uh, uh, confessions of faith. I'm trying to think of a scripture now where Paul said that. And it had to do with his needs. But anyway, it's in Philippians 4.19. When he said that, he wasn't reading. When he said that, he wasn't, he wasn't reading. When the woman that had the issue of blood, she wasn't reading in the book of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? It's got to be something within us. And it takes the word of God and the spirit of God in us to lead and guide us. Turn with me to uh, John uh, chapter 15, I think it is. St. <coughs> John. Starting at the first verse, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he maketh, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth, that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Some of the things we're going through. Or just to bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Some of the things that we go through. I know I had to go through a whole lot of things. When I first got saved. I saw people. Who got saved. And they got blessed with this. And blessed with that. And all of this stuff. But when I got saved. It was like all hell broke loose. The devil started taking this and taking that, and he had me sitting, woe is me. There's a song by the Wadlow brothers that said that every time that uh, I almost let go, God kept me. Well, during that time, I was ready to let go. Because since I got saved, it seemed like I can't have nothing anymore. 
Can't have nothing. People breaking in my house that wouldn't even walk by my house at one time or another. Now they're coming in. Stealing my goods and everything. Stealing from my family. And if it take all of this to go to church, to be a church boy, I was ready to let go. But it's a funny thing about God, how he, when he puts a hook in your jaw, you, you can wiggle and go on all you want to. I don't know if y'all, I'm not a real fisherman, but I've been fishing. And once the hook is set in the jaw, fish can't get it loose. Well, I was kind of like a fish. And God had put a hook in my jaw and I couldn't let go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let go and I desired to let go, but I couldn't let go. Amen. And then one day I read in the book of Timothy where he said, endure hardness as a good soldier. Now, I didn't call myself as a soldier for the Lord at all, but I always counted myself as a, as a soldier. But he said, endure hardness. So sometimes the things that we go through, what God was doing at that time, he had to do some breaking. He had to break up some fallow ground in my life. He had to see, he had to show me that all the time that I had thought I was in control, I was not in control. <laughs> but more or less, I was being controlled. And every one of us, at any given time, in any given day, is under the control of one of two spirits. One good, one evil. It takes the word of God in you to point out the way. That's right. Amen? Amen. It takes the word of God to show you not just where you are, but where you need to be. Yes. It takes the word of God to show you where you can go. Because every one of us <clears throat> can produce the faith that, that Paul had can produce the faith that the centurion soldier had. Every one of us can produce the same faith. And I'm not saying be like Paul. Rather, I'm, I, I'm more be like Caleb was. Caleb was a man that stood at the uh, uh, promised land with Joshua now. And there he was at the promised land and they went over to spy out the land. He was one of the 12 spies. But when they came back, they brought an evil report. And God was upset with them because they said that they were like grasshoppers. It's amazing how trials and testing can make you feel little about your own self. But the word of God has told us that he is with us. He's told us that he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And although it don't always feel good, no, no testing is pleasing to your flesh. No testing. But we must remember that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. In the book of Jeremiah, God said to Jeremiah, he said, Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Let me tell you something. We could sit down, the best minds in the world could get together, and they couldn't come up with nothing that's too hard for God. So the things that we might be going through, the problems that we might be having, and I know
know sometimes it, it's easy for it's easy for a preacher to stand up here and say, give it to God. I've been there. I've been there. And I had people telling me, Brother Joe, the Lord wants you to give it over to him. The Lord wants you to give it. Well, I give it to him as long as they was there telling me that. And sure enough, as soon as they left, I done took it back on myself. But one thing I can say, the testimony never changed. You got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. And because I had strength when they were around, I went to church more. I decided to go to church more where I could get some strength. Not necessarily from reading the word of God. I was getting it from those who, was, who had read the word of God. Once again, we see our importance as the church to reach this world. We have to show strength. And by doing so, by me going back and forth to church, I gained the strength. It got me to this point today. It used to be my prayer was, Lord, why me and how long? <laughs> Amen? But it's no longer, that's not my prayer anymore. Now, when I find myself going through something, my prayer is, Lord, what would you have me learn? Help me learn it well so I never have to do it again. <laughs> Help me to learn whatever it is you would have me know. Help me to learn it well. So that I don't have to go that route anymore. Believe me, I had to do a lot of back and forth return trips. Because I didn't get it. But the good thing about God, some people will pass you on just to get rid of you. Yeah. But we're all precious in this sight. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Never has it ever meant as much as it means today the words of John 3.16 For God so loved the world For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Don't you know when you're going through something, God loves you just as much now as he, when you ain't going through something. If we don't be careful, that's, that's another thing the enemy will do. He make us isolate ourselves. Sure, God don't want you to sin, but we all make mistakes. But the thing about sin is, mistakes, the mistakes and the sins that we commit, they cause us to feel less about ourselves than God feels about us. We feel bad about ourselves. When the, the writer in Isaiah said, come now, let us reason together. I don't care if your sins are like scarlet. Another place the word says, wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. God stands ready. God stands ready I don't care what the situation, I don't care how bad, I don't care how dark the hour, God is still God. Amen. God is still God. Amen. But God needs people that will believe him. God needs people who will stand for his truth. Amen. Amen.
Bible tells us we'll mount up with wings like he. We'll walk and not be weary. We'll run and faint not. Amen. That's God's word on you. And if you can't stand on God's word, what can you stand on? Let's go to, let's go right quick to Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. And here the writer, Jesus is saying, let me say, let me go back up to the 24th verse. It says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Amen? And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the, the floods came, and the Winds blew and beat up on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. All I'm saying is that if you're going to build a house, we ought to build it on a rock. Amen. And that rock is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. That rock is Jesus the Christ who said he would never leave us nor forsake us. I know it's hard for us to grasp that. Because we see people every day. But when it comes to Jesus, we don't see. Well, you don't have to see. I see him. I see him in Pastor. I see him in you. I see him in the young lady that sang the song. I see him. Because every one of us that's here and everyone that's on the radio, we had someplace else we could be and something else we could do. Amen. 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 And you can't tell me there ain't enough stuff out here in the world to draw you away from the house of God, the people of God, and the word of God. Come on, preach. Plenty of stuff out here. But it's something about the name Jesus. Yeah. It's something about the gathering together of the saints of God that brings strength. Thank God that there were strong saints back when I was coming along. And their story didn't change. They kept saying, Brother Joe, you got to let God have it. And I let God have it as long as they were saying it. As long as I was at work, I was good. But on the weekends, all by myself, that enemy would play with my heart and mind. And one day I decided that I was going to do what I had been being told to do. I was going to pick up the word of God and start reading. Didn't understand none of what I was reading. But let me say this, this word is not just written word on paper. This word is spiritual. And it's something about the word of God that if you read it, even though you don't understand it, if you start to read it, one thing is for sure, that devil that's tormenting you, he understands every word in here. He understands every word in here. 
That's why when you try to read it, you start going, getting sleepy. He understands this word. That's why he, if he can, he'll get you to hide it or put it down somewhere and never pick it up again. Some people say, well, do the Lord, the Lord talk to you? Sure he does. I believe he talks to all of us. I believe that there's a place where we make a choice. We make a choice, whether we'll do right or whether we'll do wrong. Amen. Amen. So, with having said that, the choice is yours. Will you build your house on sand or will you build it on rock? And that's the choice that we have to make every day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Every day. And the Bible still say in vain that when I would do good, evil is always present. It's always there. But guess what? I'm glad that I can say today that greater is he that is in me yes. than he that is in the world. And I can put the enemy under my foot. I don't have to give in to my fleshly actions or desires. We still gonna have them because we in this flesh. That's right. We in this flesh. But if we will let the word of God take root in our hearts and in our minds, and all that we do, and all it takes is believing. And if you believe it, act accordingly. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. God bless you. God keep you. And I'm done. Amen. Amen. We like to thank you for listening to the Walk in Truth broadcast. Our worship service is held every Tuesday and Sunday at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ building. Located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. Tuesday's Bible study is at 7 p.m. and Sunday worship at 8.30 a.m. All are welcome. If you would like to donate to this ministry please look in the description box and donate on your favorite platform of choice. Continue to listen to us on our Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube page and on our Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Facebook page. Please subscribe to either platform to be notified when we are broadcasting. We again want to thank you for your prayers and your continuous support. May God bless you, keep you and always remember, walk in the truth of the Lord Jesus and be at peace.